Good morning, everyone, here on this amazing, beautiful Monday morning. I hope everyone had a great weekend. And once again, if you're on here, let me know. Tell me where you're from. And also remind me or let me know exactly, uh, you know, um, how life has been treating you, how, how the world's been... Uh, uh, going good for you as far as you know you changing the world for the kingdom of god and i'm excited to be here with you guys this morning i really am and uh let me say this as well i know a lot of you listen to a lot of the uh the podcast and these uh facebook lives but i really want to encourage you guys don't just listen to what i'm saying get the book because it's really important that you get the book or download the book because most everything that i talk about in these lives don't even come from the book like maybe two percent so you don't want to miss out on the main things i actually sat down and really prayed about and written out in a book form all right so definitely make sure you getting the fullness of everything we're talking about on all the books we do every month because it's really important to be able to understand that whole the whole dynamics about that so all right so i'm excited to be with you guys this morning i really am and we're gonna get into a good thing today let me say this now this is gonna be the last um monday let's see here i think we got one more monday do we not um uh, let's see. Oh, actually, do have more warm, warm. Okay, I take that back. We have one more Monday for this month, and then we'll talk about the new book coming out in March, which I'm excited about as well. And let me just say this to you guys. Uh, as you know, this month has been Freedom from Religion, uh, my new book. Uh, but also, we just got the book for the month of March, which I'm excited about. I'll go and show you the book, but you can't get it now, okay? But it's called Blueprint for a Stress-Free Life. And this one's going to be good because I get a lot, give a lot of points in it. So we'll talk about that maybe in a couple of weeks, all right? But today, we're going to finish talking about freedom from religion because it's very important to sort of know that exactly what religious things look like, what religious people look like, how to stay away from religious sort of uh, sayings, religious people. You know, a lot of times you know, we don't realize that, you know, Jesus said something really important, and that was, he said, um, you know, um, traditions make the word of God of none effect. And last week we sort of picked up on, you know, this, that scripture where we talked about when it says, you know, traditions make the word of God. And notice how the word make is there. We didn't talk about that last week, but I want to talk about that this week. When it says, you know, traditions make the word of God of none effect, which basically makes it null and void. That's another, uh, actually, uh, some of the terminology in the Greek is it makes it null and void. So when you think about, um, when you take a, think about dispowering or, or in, uh, we think about empowering something, but sort of taking down or breaking down its power of anything, you realize it's not going to work for you, right? So when you think about the understanding of, let's say, if we have a water faucet, and let's say the water faucet just decides to die, uh, you know, maybe the handle is broken, and what's going to happen when the handle breaks? You can't turn the handle, so you're never going to get the flow of the fresh water. And what does the Bible say? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And so when you understand the whole dynamics of uh, you know, of, of a flow of God, energetic flow of God, and how how the Spirit, since we're led by the Spirit, the Bible says, that the Spirit's um, revelation or the Spirit's uh, d uh, definition is to take us into a flowing, which the flowing takes us into an advancing, right? And so when you see that and understand that, that means that's how you go from glory to glory, is by taking the flow, not the fall right? Because the fall will be living in a tradition, living in a ritualistic type of paradigm in the mind that actually takes it to a place where you forget or you don't think things through of God's word or you don't think things through when it deals with the mind of Christ, right? So let's go that, that route for a moment. When we think about, you know, traditions make the word of God in none effect. What this is saying to you is this. It's saying that, you, that, that it actually makes it, which means it forces it. It pushes it. What, is it. what does the Bible say? The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Which means the spirit realm of God's kingdom doesn't deal with sort of a soft, slow, moving it move it, it deals with a advancement of forcefulness okay so imagine energy when it turns on the light bulb it it's a force you know that that causes it to begin to you know cause that light bulb to you know to be bright so that's how when you stick your finger in a light socket if you notice think of it this way when you stick your finger into a light socket it doesn't just like if you're not that you ever should do this but if you stick your finger in it which god knows i did as a kid you know and let me tell you something there was a lot of choice words that came out of my mind my mouth okay i'm not gonna lie but when you do, I, it didn't build up. I did put my finger in the light socket and, say, and you know, 
in the outlet and say, okay, I can feel it's getting stronger, it's getting stronger, ow, that hurts. The moment you do that, it's a bolt of electricity, right, that hits you, which means it's an instant, you know, a forceful power. And so if you think about the understanding of God's kingdom saying, you know, my people, you know, you know is, if, takes it violently by force, then you also have to think in the reverse side where it says the traditions make the word of God. The word make there also is a forcefulness. And so what it's saying to you is it forces and literally, and literally forces God out of the picture. It pushes, it violently pushes forces God and anything that has to, do, has to do with freedom, liberty. Think of this way, because why? The word of God is what? It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts asunder between soul and spirit. So what that's saying is this. It's saying the forcefulness of God's word, it, it, it forces separations between soul and spirit. It forces light into a revelation, uh, into, with the revelation uh, into a dark place. It forces doors to, you know, to slam wide open. It doesn't just slowly open up it forcefully like like electricity it forces doors to be open why because god's word is forceful when you think of a sword a sword you know if you use a sword let's say you're gonna i watched by the way the um uh the movie last night the woman king if you guys ever seen it or not it's on uh, netflix it's i think i think it was like number one in netflix right now now i'm saying this to those who are no non-religious right i don't watch tv i don't watch anything brother Good for you. Praise the Lord. But for us, we like to be entertained. Amen? Because we know how to take things and, and turn into God's Word. Uh, you know, to the pure, all things are pure. To the defiled, all things are defiled. But anyway, that's just my take on it. But, you know, so I'm not going to lie. I love my imagination stirred up because God gave me imagination. So The Woman King was a really great movie, by the way. I think it had Viola Davis in it as the main uh, uh, actor, and she's phenomenal. But a great movie, by the way. A little bit like Wakanda. You know, if you, I'm a huge Wakanda fan, like huge. But um, but anyway, but it's a little bit like that, but it's got a great, great movie. And uh, yes, it is a good movie, Rebecca. And just the, the ending of it is just spectacular. Like reconciliation. Uh, I can't say it. I can't give you give, give it away for you. But anyway, but it's really good. But my point being with that is... You know, um, when you watch the movie, you know, it had swords in it. And these swords are like chopping heads and cutting people, you know, as far as like, you know, the good, like fighting the forces of evil mentality, you know. But it, you don't mess around with a sword. Like, if you swing a sword really hard, like you can, I hate to say this this way, but you can cut off a head. You know, you can amputate something or slice between something. But if you just barely use a sword or a knife, you know, hey, it's going to be like, ow, that, that hurt. That's a little, you know, chip or, or, or you know, cut, whatever. But when you think of forcefulness, God's word has to be forceful to get rid of something completely. Like it doesn't like halfway cut through it. It like eradicates it. Well, that's really how traditions are as well. Tradi they are fierce. Traditions actually force like a sword and, and cut asunder. In other words, traditions forces God so hard out of your picture. It slams a door so hard in God's face. And so traditions, religiosity, is a spiritual power that literally causes you to, when you do decide to move forward and get out of tradition, it takes you years to actually get all that junk, I'd say crap, but I'm trying to be nice, right, Rebecca? Uh, get all that junk out of your system because it, force, it forcefully advances more tradition, more religiosity into you. Let me give you guys get a, a great example. You know, that's how powerful traditions and religiosity is because I would go as far as I was saying is religious, religiosity is a spirit. Yes, because if you think of the Pharisees, the Pharisees were so religious and yet they knew the law and the Torah so good, but yet let's put it this way. We might say, really, is it really that hard, that hard hitting? Absolutely. Because when you think about religiosity, traditions, ritualistic type of thinkings and stuff, you have to remember that it was so much in, ingrained into the Pharisees that if you were to ask them from day one, if, if they met Jesus on the like, first impression makes everything, you know, right? You know, first impression may, means everything. Imagine, imagine someone who is looking at this and, as a Pharisee, looking into Jesus. Jesus walks up to them and says, hey, by the way, guys, you know, first impression, right? Let's just go there. And, they, and he says, you know, hey, I got this new way of living. Um, you know, I'm going to sort of, you know, really give you guys another complete, complete take on, 
uh, on what you read that might be legalistic. I'm going to give you a whole new take. It's going to set people free. I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to, you know, um, you know, cause blind eyes to see. I mean, they would probably be a little shocked, but they'd probably be like, oh, okay. It seemed like a little threat to us, but okay, whatever. But, but notice that through the workings of miracles and through the workings of the the energetic anointing of God, the power of God, working through that in, in Jesus, which was what? Forcefully advancing the kingdom, you know, forcefully getting blind eyes open, raising, raising the dead, you know, getting ears to hear, forcefully pushing the agenda, for lack of better words, of the kingdom upon people. All of a sudden, it's like the religiosity within and the traditions within the Pharisees drove it not to say, we don't want anything to do with you. We don't like you. Oh, you know what? Move on. We hate you. You know, let's talk about him behind us back. No, it forcefully killed him. I want you to think about that. So it literally led him to a place of taking him to the, to, you know, to the, to the cross and killing him. Now, even though we know Jesus laid his life down, let's be real about the, the Pharisees, man, they were taking him to, to rot. They were taking him to die, right? And so traditions that's inside of you that might, you might think, eh, it's not that big of a deal, you know, I'll deal with it, whatever, you know, religi religiosity, you know, whatever. You have to remember how deadly it is, and it literally will kill the Christ in you. Now, once you think about that, that's what it did on earth, and that's what energy does when you stick your finger in a light socket, and that's what it talks about when it says forcefully advance in the kingdom, right? And that's what it talks about when it says traditions make or force the word of God of none effect. It literally disem disempowers it and throws it to the curb. So you're talking a forcefulness. So is it very important to understand that we don't want to play around with traditions and religiosity? Yes, because that's what it does. So don't think for a moment that the kingdom of God is not just forcefully advancing with power and, and authority. So are traditions and religiosity. So as it works within you, if it's working in you, it forcefully shoves out everything that's of God. Right? That's why the Bible says what? Casting down vain imagination. Anything that would exalt itself against the freedom, the the uh, the. Um, uh, the relationship, the um, the energy of joy, the happiness, the overwhelming part of worship, the overwhelming part of, of, of a healthy lifestyle, the riches God's promised you, the health God's promised you, you know, the joy, the skip, the, the pep in your step, you know, the joy that you should have on this journey, all of that, it's out to destroy, every bit of it. And so don't think for a moment that Pharisees don't just come in there and say, Oh man, my tradi you know, traditions, religiosity, you know, oh well, it's no big deal, you know, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, because it actually comes in like the kingdom and it forcefully eradicates everything of God's kingdom. Just like God's kingdom radically forces everything out that's not of God, forces it out, same way. So you have to remember that when you, when you understand, yes, it does, it does dull the voice of the Spirit and it literally kills everything that's in you. That's why the Bible says what? Of, that's the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says the law kills. It doesn't say the law makes me sick. You know, the law hurts. So that's why when you, when you use a biblical law against somebody and says, oh, look at them, you know, uh, and you, you just cut them down and, you know, judge their salvation. You're not a Christian brother. You're not a Christian sister. Oh, look at them. They're living a lifestyle, but they claim to love Jesus. Oh, look, they're alcoholics, but they're Christian. Oh, no, they're not, brother. You cannot. Let me tell you, when you, when you throw law at people, it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't make them sick. It doesn't say, ouch. You literally are using the power of your tongue through the danger of legalism of the law and you kill them. So when you say, when you say, oh, you know what? Oh, they're an alcoholic, Jeremy, and they claim to love, they claim to love Jesus, but they're an alcoholic. Well, praise God for God's grace. And God's going to walk them through as he walks out their salvation for him. He's going to walk them through to the point of of uh, uh, maybe being an alcoholic. He's going to walk them through the point of maybe doing meth. He's going to walk them through the point of whatever it is in their life that maybe might not be pleasing to God or might be hurting them. He's going to gently, lovingly, gracefully walk them through this. But not us, right? I mean, that's what, not us. We take the law and we say, you cannot be a Christian if you're an alcoholic. You cannot be a Christian if you smoke. You cannot, don't tell me you're a Christian and you're over there doing cocaine. You know, let me tell you something. 
everyone has demons inside of them. Now, let me, when I say this, I mean like I'm talking traditions, religiosity, uh, addictions. Um, um, you know, people say, you know, people can say, for example, oh, you can't serve two masters, brother. They're over there smoking these this weed over there, and they're drinking this uh, this. You know, they're drinking that vodka straight up, and and they claim, you know, they say they're a Christian. They're not a Christian. Look at that math head addict over there. He said he was raised in church. He's not a Christian. Let me say this to you. Oh, look at you who's eating all the sugar and you're consuming in your body and you're making your body fat. How many times does the Bible talk about, talk about gluttony and it doesn't even talk about meth or cocaine? Come on, folks. I'm being real with you. How many of us are addicted to sugar? Every one of us, I'm sure. How many of us can be overweight a little bit? Every one of us. How many of us probably have have maybe thought, man, she is she or he is horrible, you know, or look, they're ugly, but you know, come on. Let me tell you something. Everybody struggles. Just because somebody has an addiction that you see outwardly doesn't mean it's it's any any worse than the addiction you have to your sugar habit and your saccharin that is not even anything real that your body doesn't even know how to intake. Come on. Hello. And your and your Mars bars and your and your zing, zingers and your you and your come on. Am I being real with you guys? Never point fingers because they could say to you, what if God said to you, look at you, you're a sugar ad addict and you're killing your body and you're giving yourself diabetes and you're overweight and yet, and yet you can't be a Christian. Imagine the same treatment that we would all get back, right, talking to myself here, that we would get back on the dangers we put upon other people only because we see their addictions outwardly and we think that we can judge it to say, but it's worse than, it's worse than mine. No, it's not, my friend. If you look statistically, there's more diabetics in the world now than ever before. It has tripled in the past 10 years. Obesity has tripled. Uh, migraines from saccharin has tripled. Liver failure has tripled because we because of certain you know uh, drugs and stuff. Think about it. What I'm saying is this: is the law is out to kill you. People say, "Oh, the devil kills, kills, you know, and destroys." Let me tell you something, my friend. The Bible makes it clear. If you read that whole chapter, that is not talking about the devil. That is not talking about Satan. Oh, Satan comes to kill us, you'll destroy. Now, even though we know he does, that chapter is not even talking about the, about the devil at all. You need to read in the original language, and you need to read the full chapter. It talks about who the conversation is being held with. It's dealing with religion and tradition. It's dealing with the religious system and spirit of the day, not even Satan. Are you with me? I know that's a mind blower for many of you. Now, are the two one? Sure they are. Who does it come from? Yes, we get that. However, it's actually talking about the religious system comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what it means when it says the thief. And it's backed up from Genesis to Revelation. So the religious system is the most deadliest thing to God. Do you think God looks and says, hey, here's a guy over here that doesn't know Jesus, doesn't know the things of God's kingdom, never been raised in church. He's over here on the street corner, you know, shooting up meth. I think it's what you do, shoot it up. You know, here's a lady over here. Man, she's a prostitute and probably been with 10 guys in, in three nights. And, you know, uh, you know, and look at them. And you, and yet, but yet, look at us. Look at the religious system. Look at the. We could use the term "whore of Babylon." We could use a term that Revelations uses. That's in the church, not the world, folks. Read the book of Revelation. So we have to understand that to God, God's grace is more on them. Because it says where much sin is, where much grace abounds. So God's grace would be more on them than it even would be on us. Simply because of the fact it says once you've had a taste of something and you turn from that, man, it's far worse for, me, for you than it is for somebody who's never drank from that cup. Think about that. So we need to, we need to realize religion is embedded in us. And it's killing not only us, but it literally kills people. And so when we say, oh, look at them, Jeremy, oh, man, you know, they claim this, they claim to love the Lord, but they're on this, or maybe they don't claim to love the Lord. And yet God says, that legalism inside of you 
It's not going to hurt their heart. Oh, maybe, 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 Jerry, they need to be hurt to waken up from what's going on. Religiosity that, that spews out of our mouth like a tongue of fire, the Bible says, it literally will kill them. And we wonder why they end up dead. We wonder why, you know, here, here I'll, I'll give you one. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say something to you guys. We look at people, i got to be careful on this one. Pamela, pray for me. We look at people and we say, those kids in school who, oh, well, they're gay and, you know, and, and they're committing suicide. Well, they just needed Jesus. That's why, that's why they killed themselves. And yet, there's no compassion for a child who maybe just needs to be loved on. Maybe doesn't need to be preached to through, from your legalism. Maybe just needs to be loved on. And watch that love and grace reconcile them. And yet when we see people who kill themselves, we say, well, see, you know, they were in the wrong. No, that's not the attitude of Jesus. The attitude of Jesus should be, you should be weeping because someone just murdered themselves. We should be upset and giving them love and grace instead of throwing the, throwing the rod at them of legalism. Well, if that, you know, no, let me tell you something. We should be people of grace and love because we're the ones who should be saving people not to say, oh, do you know Jesus, you know, five-year-old kid? No, saving people means saved from. So terrios, salvation, literally means saved from. It doesn't always mean, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It means I'm going to save you from hate. I'm going to save you from the kids hating on you. That's salvation. I'm giving you salvation, 12-year-old girl, 15-year-old boy. You know, I don't care about the issue of gay or straight. That's not my concern with you. My concern is I'm going to give you salvation, soteria, which means save from this, save from that. I'm going to give you salvation of love to, to eradicate the hate that is spewed towards you. I'm going to give you the. I'm going to give you the salvation saved from the um, the the uh, the. Um, let's say, for example, the uh, rejection. I'm going to give you soteria salvation saved from rejection by accepting you, loving you, grace upon you. That's salvation, right? Let me tell you something, folks. We, many of you need to study the word. When you go to Israel and you talk to these Jews and you talk to these rabbis, they're going to be like, you don't even have a clue of what you're talking about because America has screwed up so bad. So what we have to understand is the whole power of what salvation means. Soteria, saved from sickness, saved from rejection, saved from abandonment, saved from poverty, saved from... A adulterous life, save from meth, save from smoking, save from cussing, save from gossiping, save from gluttony, save from uh, sadness, save from depression. That's salvation. And so when you when you understand the concept of what salvation really is, then you will start you will start doing this. You'll start saving people. You know what? This woman over here is rejected. I'm gonna help save her. I'm going to give her salvation. I'm going to save her from rejection. I'm going to save her from abandonment. By what? Loving, accepting, laughing with her. Hey, come to dinner with me tonight. Hey, come on over today. That, my friend, is the terminology and the definition of salvation. Not according to me, not according to Ingus language, but according to the original Aramaic and according to the original Greek that are lined up as equals when it deals with definitions, which you don't ever have a whole lot of. So you're dealing with you're dealing with saved from anything that is not part of God's kingdom. So you're being saved into joy. That's why the Bible says his loving kindness draws men to repentance. Not legal. So the law kills. Well, they shouldn't be doing that. What are you? Legalism kills. You're literally, when we say, well, you know what? They should be doing that anyway. I'm going to be praying for them. You're speaking out of pharmaceutical mentality of legalism. What you're saying is, I know it's better for them, which you might. But what we're saying is, I I know what they need. I, if they would have just done that. Sometimes I think as Christians, we look forward to people uh, reaping what they've sown more than we do loving them. That should be a tweet. Think about that. Sometimes as Christians, the, the legalistic, pharmaceutical part of us inside, I believe sometimes can say, 
Oh, man, I'm just waiting for you to reap what you've sown more than saying, man, God, if there's anything I can help them with and just love on them with, you know what? Hey, Lord, help me to do that. Instead of saying, you know what? You've been smoking so long. I, I knew you'd get cancer. I just knew you'd get cancer. Instead of doing that and spewing out legalistic words of death that will eventually kill them, instead of doing that or saying, any day now, brother, any day now, man, she's a chain smoker. Any day now, she's going she's gonna, to she's gonna get cancer. Instead of saying, see, that's from a legalism point of view, a, re a religious spirit point of view. Because what we're saying is, we're, we can't wait for you to reap what you've sown. Versus saying, God, have mercy upon them. I pray that they don't reap anything that would cause harm to their body or harm to them. Lord, I pray to them. And you know what God says? God said, what are you going to do about it? Well, God, I'll pray from, from, from afar. And God's like, no, you befriend them. You love on them. You give them grace because maybe they've had so much legalism and maybe they've had so much tradition and religious spirits thrown at them so much, it probably drove them to smoke and, or drink or shoot up or whatever or sleep around. And that's probably what did it to them. And so instead of us reinforcing the religious spirit upon them of legalism and man any day now instead of doing that we should say lord have mercy on them just like you did me give me grace father give me grace god as i have grace upon them because you've shown me grace god from the times i've cussed you out didn't want anything to do with you right consume things i shouldn't consume these are things we have to be able to understand what religion's all about. Man, religion wants to hurt you. It wants to destroy you. It wants to kill you. And so that's why I, for me and my ministry, I've taken on all my life uh, the love factor. I am here to love you. I am here to give you grace because his grace is sufficient. Law is not sufficient legalism is not sufficient tradition is definitely not sufficient what is sufficient which means what will suffice me what will what will entangle me with healing what will entangle me with love will entangle me with grace will entangle me to become a better person is when love is thrown at me is when grace is um, you can look scientifically scientifically did you know that if you you know we've talked about this before with the water if you hate water spew words of hatred to water give love to water dr amato you know who 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 came up with this whole powerful theory of uh, of realism really that's true you know understood that the crystallization within water is defected and deformed when it's spoken hateful to but when it when water is spoken gracefully to it forms beautiful crystallites in it. Amazing. You can put it under a microscope and it's mostly art so articulate in its in its beauty. And it's all and it's just beautifully cut out as if someone like like a Michelangelo took 50 years to do, which he probably couldn't even do it as good as, as what it's what it's shown. That's the beauty that is shown in us since our bodies are made up of mostly water when love is given to us. It starts formulating the treasure. The crystallization of the water in us starts formulating to the treasure in the earthen vessel and starts displaying the beauty in us. And something in me starts saying, you know what? I can quit this addiction. You know what? I am loved by God. I can give up sleeping around. I can give up overeating. I can give up on breaking this stupid sugar habit. I can give up on my cigarette smoke. I can give up. On, on on my cocaine addiction. I can give up on me always thinking negative, right? So that's what love does to the soul and does to the body, the natural body. You know, my sister and I adore my sisters. I adore my whole family. My sister and I yesterday had such an amazing, amazing time together. We went to dinner together last night, had an amazing time, and, you know, here we are, me, my sister and I wearing our ball caps, and she knows everybody being a realtor, you know. It's like everybody comes in, hey, hey, you know, if they don't know her, they don't, they know me. If they don't know me, they know her, you know, and so it's like, you know, and so we're sitting there eating, you know, eating together, and it's like, just the synergy of, of flow of love between siblings and the synergy between the love between friends and family members and strangers getting to know each other and building relationships as you know as friends all of that energetic powerful flow is amazing 
Because when you get your family together or you get your loved ones together or you start giving love to somebody, imagine what it does to their body. And we were talking about this. Now, let me say this to you. Here's what, here's what we're talking about. I'll, I'll let you in our conversation. So I'm addicted to certain shows. I'm not going to lie, okay? Call it, call it a good thing or a bad thing. But if you guys ever watch on Netflix, I am, I'm so addicted to it. And I, and I will text my sister and she's like, I can't quit watching it. Uh, but it's called cell, uh, Skin Decision. How many of you have heard that skin decision? It's it's on um, actually the actually the doctor uh, um, befriended me recently um, in Beverly Hills and Nurse Jamie is her as they call her and it's on Netflix and I love it and I'll tell you why and some people think it's all about vanity oh because they do all that plastic surgery and they do this and they do that you know and yet the show's not about that it's about redemption it's about people who've been in abusive relationships where their face was messed up uh, one guy was on a, in, on a, uh, was on his bicycle and this hit and run of this underage girl hit him so hard threw him into the car completely dislocated his jaw has uh, can't even close his mouth has you know scars all over his face and neck you know one lady who all of her life she was a major alcoholic and then you know took up cigarette smoking and it just and 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 it was lived out the sun and was so down on herself because of all the hell she went through i mean this these this show is such a redemption of what they can do for them and they and so they get to con consult the doctor and the nurse you know they get consulting you know one of them does only laser surgery lasers no don't even touch it with a knife the other one does plastic surgery with a knife you know and it's like what can we do to help bring these people to redeem these people to start loving themselves a little bit more just give them a little bit more pep in their step you know from all the damage that maybe this was done to them or you know one lady was cut up by her husband you know I mean, I mean, you, I mean, all this stuff, and yet the show's amazing. And one thing, you know, they talked about was it said, you know, one thing the, the doctor said, which I didn't know, is the doctor said, you know, she said, she said, people don't realize, she said, uh, one lady she was talking to, and she said, uh, I don't know I'm telling you this stuff, you guys are all my family. One lady she was talking to, you know, who said, who is a chain smoker. And you know, and 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 she had low self esteem. She was so wrinkled and so like had so much low self esteem and just so much of a hellish life. And the doctor said, "I want so bad to like maybe give you a facelift, help you out to maybe just make you feel a little more confident about yourself." But I can't. And I didn't know this, but she said, "I can't." And the lady said, "Why can't you?" She said, "Simply because of the fact that you're a chain smoker." And she said, "Because smoking kills all your red blood cells in your body. All the blood cells that take to that to, that goes to the area that you, that maybe let's say you're cut in or you were, you know fell off your body. It, it, it goes and it repairs it." And it brings all the collagen, it brings everything, and it starts repairing the place that was torn or ripped if you're bruised or damaged. And yet she said, I can't because if I gave you a facelift or even did anything with a knife on your, on your body, on, your, on, on any part of your body, your skin would fall off. Literally, because it can't mend and heal itself because there's no red blood cells that rush to it to start working in an area to bring forth a healthiness and to and to and to bring forth a beautiful maybe health you know healthy scar it won't repair itself i didn't even know that and she was talking about the damages of uv rays from the sun you know sugar um how it how it makes you so much older than you really are smoking that does and i was like man you know, and one of the shows even said, you know, she says, people don't realize, sacri I mean, I was like blown away thinking, wow, the damage we do to our bodies that our bodies can't even repair themselves because of what we consume in our bodies. And I, I was blown away. I said all that to say this. Okay, I'm getting to a point. I know my team's probably like, oh, Jesus. But my point is this, is when we judge people, we don't know how much more it's putting pressure upon the body their body from meth or drugs or cocaine or 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 saccharin or uh, obesity or sugar or, or or drink i mean what it does to the body and i'm talking over excess but what it does to the body and it, when it destroys membranes and it destroys you know red blood cells that that if something was to happen to us our bodies don't can't repair itself because we've damaged all the cells and it's and it was like wow that was like earth shattering to me you know i was blown away thinking man god i mean you know i need to i need to be careful what goes in my body now you know i mean i i, I don't do these things but like i mean i need to be careful but my point being with that with all of that is this we've all judged people 
We've all damaged people by what we say. And the religious spirit, imagine people that are in those type of situations that are already damaging their body, destroying red, red blood cells that can't heal itself. Imagine, just go with me for a moment. Imagine what we do when the power of life and death comes out of our tongue, but not even just words of, of, of death, but on top of the words of death, we, we, we attach to it the law that kills. So when, when we understand that we are spewing killing, we're mur that we, we are literally murdering them and killing them, same thing, I know, just different terminology, Imagine that their bodies are fighting so hard already to repair itself. And what do we do? We throw a religiosity. We throw legalism. We throw a judgmentalism spirit towards them. Imagine it's literally going to literally it's going to kill them because their body is fighting so hard already to repair itself, to create new red blood cells the best it can, if it can. And yet we as Christians are not giving life to them. Hey, you know what? You're so loved by me, but you know what I do. Hey, we'll deal with that another day. That's not my concern. I love you. Come join me for dinner. Hey, you know what? I love you. You know, you're beautiful. Come on over here. Let's do dinner together. Hey, come on. Let, 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 me, let me take you shopping. Hey, come on over here. Let, let me take you. Get, let's go to Starbucks get some get some coffee. But you know what I do? I know what you do. I, I know exactly what you do. I, I know you sleep around. I know you cuss a lot. I know you smoke a lot. I know you drink a lot. I know you shoot up. I know you sleep around. But you know what? I, that, that's not my business. That's between you and God. My job is to give you salvation, to save you from the rejection that everybody else has given you. Save you from the abandonment that everybody else has thrown at your face. You know, saving you from all the junk that the world and the religious system is already throwing at you right now that you just don't need because it's already killing you as it is. I'm going to save you by throwing at you love, acceptance, acceptance um, um, grace, uh, 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 joy. Hey, join me. Relationship. Could possibly be, but I might be shooting, shooting up heroin because maybe nobody's ever given the time of day. Maybe they've never known what a relationship is at all. And what do we do? We can give them salvation, of saving them from a lack of, of hugs, a lack of relations that they've never had. And we can give them salvation by giving them a new relationship with us. Come on, folks. Creativity doesn't just flow in, you know, oh, I got the mind of Christ. Creativity flows in every area of our lives from Christ. And that's a beautiful thing about, about life. And so when we deal with religion, we're dealing with a lot more, folks, than just, oh, man, I don't like that liturgical stuff in church. Well, that, hey, that's the least of my worries. I mean, you know, uh, well, they're over there doing hell, Mother Mary's over there. Hey, you know what? At least they're praying. At least they're praying, Right. They could be saying, you know, MF and GD, right? I mean, come on, folks. I'm being real with you guys, you know? Uh, you know, uh, well, I don't, I don't believe in that wearing those, you know, that priestly robe he does, you know, or, 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 or you know, or, man, I, you know, religion is just two, you know, two songs and a sermon. We get out an hour. Oh, I'm not religious about that. Hey, praise God, at least they're at church. At least they're worshiping God, whether it's 30 minutes, an hour, two songs and a sermon. Praise God, at least they're doing that, right? So you have to, you have, we have, we, we all have to come to a place, understand that religiosity and traditions go so far past the two songs in a sermon and we're out in an hour. It goes so far past, you know, the rosary. It goes so far past, you know, uh, praise God, hallelujah, oh, how, amen, brother. It goes so far past all of that. It becomes, it wants you to become a, its a lifestyle of religion that kills and hurts and literally utterly destroys. So I want us to take a deep breath today with him. Take a deep breath right now. If you can, just take a deep breath. And I want you to begin to just ask the Lord to show you where you can be fixed and all this junk that we've been taught can just leave. 
you know, I, I, I have more of a problem with somebody who is more religious to say, oh man, you know she's a lesbian, oh God in heaven, and she claims Jesus. Or I would rather be around some, you know, or I would not rather be around somebody who says, oh man, they are smoking all that weed over there. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I don't do it, Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. I would, n those are the most damaging things we could ever do more than this. Hey, you know what? You know, this lesbian over here or this person over here who's committing adultery or this person over here who, let's say, is smoking or this person over here who drinks, you know, cocktails maybe once or twice a day or five times or ten times a day. I'd rather say, hey, you know what? Let's, let's all go to dinner. Let's all, let's all go to dinner for a moment. Let's all, let's, all, let's all have a great discussion. Because I'm giving them salvation of relationship, drawing them into something that might heal them. Giving them love they probably have never had before. Giving them grace they probably never had before. Let me tell you something. I'd rather be around a lesbian or a gay person far more, far more than I would someone who can judge somebody. So much more than somebody who can say, hallelujah, da 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 Oh, and then turn around and say, oh, my mother makes me sick. She's so, she's so mean and, and, and oh, she's such a hypocrite. Thank God I'm not like her. And... I don't want to be around that kind of person. You know what I mean? So you, we have to begin to understand what salvation is. Salvation is, is restore, restoration by relations, love, grace, mercy, compassion. Everything else means nothing to me because all that other stuff, that's between them and God. What's right will stand. What's wrong will go. If they're listening to God, they're listening to God. My job is to be the light, be the light, and give salvation to whosoever, right? That's my job. And if we do that, we'll see what's happening with like Asbury College right now where it's exploding. We'll see that happen more in the earth because those people, they don't care about being on TV, Fox, CNN, whatever. They don't, they, they don't want to be, oh, this is what's going on today, man. We're having it. They don't, they don't want to be interviewed. The president said they didn't want to be interviewed about that kind of stuff. You know, uh, you. I, I want to say this to you. Mark my word. Be careful in this. You know, people might say, are you going to Asbury? No, I'm not. You know why? Because they're having their time. And that's what I want to do is I want them to have their time. I have my time. They have their time. And let God bring people there that need that time and let it be going on. Let it be happening, you know. But for me, I'm going to be praying that, you know what, Lord, let it be genuine as it is. Let it be just faithful. Don't let it get all weirded out, weird, and, you know, just keep it, God, simplistic like you are. Keep it loving, keep it graceful, keep it beautiful, and let, let this just begin to spark into so many lives. Because that's what I want more than anything, amen? I really do. And I really truly say that we've got to sometimes to, um, thank you so much, Joshua. Can I just read you guys on Facebook and Instagram what Josh, Joshua said this. I don't, I don't know a whole lot, Joshua, but man, you're the, you're the buddy. You're my buddy. By the way, Joshua, you need to be on Wednesday night. I've been on my prophetic live Wednesday night. But it says, this is probably the best perspective I've ever heard from any Christian minister ever in my life. It's like another religion entirely. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for that. I, you know, I, I just, I, a lot of, a lot of religion, a lot of, um, a lot of ministers, man, they think the way I do. And they're amazing people. There's so many great Christian ministers out there that I love. It's just sometimes I think it's hard for them because sometimes we all get in this mindset of like performance. And sometimes it's hard for us to be able to say, wait a minute, stop, chill. Maybe that's not what they need today. Maybe, in fact, it's not, maybe it's not a maybe, but maybe we just need to be more real. Maybe we need to say things that are a little bit out there on the on the branch, you know, by faith, and maybe that might seem a little bit like, oh man, trigger, trigger, trigger. But maybe that's the route we need to go. And you know what? It's going to happen, man. It's going to happen. A lot of people nowadays are finally coming off that that high. And, and they're realizing what's really important, you know, and we see that in society, you know, videos don't have to be all professional suits and ties anymore. We can just say, hey, here I am, right? And so we're seeing change, changes in the world, and changes, unfortunately, unfortunately, change came to the world before it came to the church. 
you know, with, you know, hey, we can just do this now in media. We don't have to be all professional. And yet the church is like, hey, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should not, you know, we have to wear ties and suits. Maybe we can just do videos in our office or in our living room or walking outside by our pond, you know? Maybe we can wear shorts and t-shirts and do our videos now. It's sad the world came to that revelation first to be more general and and raw and real. And unfortunately, the church got got way behind on that. But you know what? Grace, grace, grace. They're getting there. We're getting there. We're all getting there, folks. All right? So thank you so much, Joshua. You guys are amazing. I really mean that. And before I close, let me just say this with you guys today. And that is this. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm so excited. Two days. Two days, guys. 20, 20 sec- is it the 22nd? Make sure my brain sometimes. Help me, Lord. The 22nd. This, this Wednesday, the 22nd, 6 p.m. You'll see it on social media, too. I'm going to have my prophetic live night like I do every, mo- every month for an hour. So if you guys are, uh, are listening to me right now, please, I beg you, take the meme that you'll see our team, Pamela, will put up today. Uh, or, you know, Pamela's like, I have one today. Uh, you know, yes, you do. Praise the Lord. But, uh, but take the memes that you see on our prophetic night. Please share them with, you, with other people. Guys, you don't know how effective this is becoming. You will never know how many people have, have joined in last month that did, have never heard of me. Not that it's about me, but never heard a prophecy, never had a word from the Lord that was on there thinking, what the hey, what's going on, man? I'm hearing this from God. I mean, this guy is telling me something from the Lord. I mean, you never will know how ministering and life-giving it's been. And that's what the kingdom's all about. So if you guys can help me with the algorithms by sharing this video, take the meme. Hey, we have no problem. If you want to copy and paste it on your on your things, whatever, go for it. Or if you want to share the meme, whatever you need to do, man, be like Mary. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Please, because we want as many people this Wednesday night, Wednesday the 22nd, as possible on our Prophetic Life Night. It's 6 p.m. Central Time, okay? So that way you won't say, man, I'm two hours behind, you know? I want you guys to be on there, okay? Please be on there. Support me if you can. Pray for the people who need the words. And when you guys see people on there saying, hey, pick me, or you know, even though I can't stand people to say, pick me, I need a word. That's fine. Grace, grace. I'll, you know, but if you guys can help me to point out, Man, Rebecca, Joshua, who else is on here with me? All my buddies and, and, and friends. Um, we got Noah on here. We've got um, Melanie. We've got no. We've got so many people in here. If you guys can just help me and say, "Hey, Jeremy, this person above me asked for a word," and give me. If you can help me with that, man. If God wills it, we're gonna do it. I'm so not kidding you guys, man. I need every one of you. Jane, oh my God, Christy Downing, Jane, uh, all of you guys on Facebook as well. I mean, I need every one of you to help me win tonight, please. It's not about me. It's not about the prophet prophesying. I don't care about that crap. What I care about is my family. I got to use my words wisely. I got I to gotta be careful my words, don't me, don't I? I tell you, I got nieces and nephews that are like, Uncle Jay. And, you know, so I, 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 you know, it's anyway, but anyway, so if you guys can be on there with me, help me please. And just, and just, and just say, you know, Hey, Jeremy, I think this lady above me, you know, named Tr- Patricia or Tom or Bob, you know, I think they wanted a word, man, that would be a life saving for me today. If you guys can do help me out with that Wednesday night. Once again, it's not about me guys. It's about all of us. It's all my mouth might be the one prophesying, but seriously, you guys can say, Hey, there's a guy on here, Jeremy. He just said this, you know, he wants a prophetic word. You guys can help me with this i because trust me you'll never know how much it it tires me out but how much it's hard when you're when your comments on two different social medias are like going 90 miles an hour and you're like okay god okay god you know and you're thinking man I, you know I, I need a break after this you know so help me with that if you guys can thank you again as always i i appreciate all you guys we're family we're doing this oh my gosh rebecca you just remind me of something and my legs asleep now Ow, my legs asleep. You just remind me of something, Rebecca, and that is this. Um, badges, 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 badges. If you guys can, anytime we're doing a live, if you guys can buy some badges, it really helps us out. I'm learning what that is, but you'll see it on here. If you want to buy a badge, you can buy one for a, a nickel. You can buy one for a dollar. You can buy it for ten dollars. It doesn't matter, but you can buy this badge, and it helps us so much. So anytime I ever go live, or even Wednesday night, man, buy some badges. It really helps us out a whole lot. All right, so. Anyway, I love you guys, man. You guys are awesome. I'll see all my family Wednesday night together. We'll all do this together, and we'll minister to people together, and we will just kick some butt, all right? I love every one of you. Have a great day, and uh, 
Hey, donate anyway, Rebecca. That's cool. Love you guys. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Have a blessed day.